Okay, so this video is going to walk through how you take a Word document that you would like to make a form out of. And in this case, we're going to turn it into a PDF form where we're going to post it on the website so that the users can type into the PDF and then click a button to submit that form via email. So right now, here is the form I have received and it's uh, regarding mock trials and uh, they're going to want students to fill out this information and we usually post things on the web as a PDF that way they can't really edit the text of the document and just type in the places that we want them to type into so the first step is once you have the word document is you want to save it as a PDF so you just do file save as and then you choose, you can call it whatever, but uh, choose PDF there. Sorry, that might be cut off a little bit. So you save that. I've already got it saved, so I'm just going to cancel that. And now I'm going to open up that file in Adobe Acrobat Professional. You have to have the professional version. Adobe Reader won't do it. So now here is my form as a PDF and what I want to do is click on this tools button and expand this forms and I'm going to create a form. So use the existing file, use the current document and now it's going to scan it and try to figure out the fields for me. Um, as you can see, it doesn't get it perfect, but it gets it close. It's got the name, the graduation date, email, some of these other things. Uh, this thing, it found a big line here. So anytime it finds a line, it thinks that's something that you want people to type into. In this particular case, I'm going to get rid of this because that line is just part of the formatting of the document. This is fine. Uh, I got this email wrong. It's actually phone, so I'm going to right click and say properties there. I'm going to call it phone instead. And then the tooltip is what, um, if they hover over it, what they see. So if they hover over that, it's going to tell them phone. And then I'm going to do properties on the email and call it email and that's fine everything's looking good here these are actually um, it has a box that you can type in instead of check boxes so I kinda got that wrong so I'm just gonna delete those and I'm gonna go up here and put in a check box I'm just gonna let it be called that for now and then I'm just going to keep putting in all those check boxes. I'm going to pause this. You don't need to watch me do all these different check boxes. Okay, start the video back up. I've got all my check boxes here in place. And then there's going to be this big box where they can type a reason why they need a waiver, which it did not find. So that's just a big text box. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that out on the form. That should be plenty of space. Uh, reason for waiver I'm gonna call it. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make some of these fields required. So like name I'm gonna right click and say set as required. Graduation date, phone, an email. I'm kind of just assuming these on my own uh, to double check everything you would email the person but uh, since this is a waiver form I assume the reason for the waiver is probably required as well. <clears throat> so now my form is to where the user can type into it. The last piece which is a little tricky is adding the submit via email button and the best way I found to do that is not using Adobe Acrobat Professional so I'm just gonna save this file now and we're gonna use a tool Adobe Live Cycle 
to add that so I'm gonna go ahead and just save this guy and I actually have it saved already so I'm just gonna cancel but let's just pretend I saved that so now I've got my new file open in Adobe Live Cycle Designer. I'm not sure if this gets bundled with Master Collection or if it's part of Adobe Acrobat Professional or if it's a free download. I just really don't know. I just have all the Adobe products, so I have this uh, program. Anyway, here's the form, and the only thing it is missing is my. Uh, submit via email. I'm going to put that down here. So there is this email submit button over here in the object library. Uh, there is a way to do it that way, but a better way is just to put a normal button in here. Uh, it's probably a little big, but who cares? And I'm going to call it submit via email. And now I'm going to set the properties of this button to uh, when you click it, send off the email. So I got to, let's see, this thing's kind of, uh, I got to make room here. Sorry, it's not being too friendly. But okay, so now I have my button selected with this purple area around it. And now for control type, I'm going to change it to submit. And this just keeps warning me that email's misspelled, but I don't care about that. So I've checked it to submit, and now this little submit tab pops up. And right now, by default, it's going to submit as XML data, which if you're a non-programmer or non-IT person, that XML data just is ugly and a bit intimidating and just not helpful. So I'm going to change this to submit the PDF. So the person will receive an email with the PDF attached. And now the final, um, the final piece of this is where it should go. So the HTML for an email is called a mail to. So I'm going to say mail to colon, and it's going to go to Andy.Hartman for this particular form at colorado.edu. So now I have my property set correctly and now I'm gonna save this guy. I'm gonna give it a different name so I don't mess up my previous versions here but uh, sorry it's a bit buried blah 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 Where is, there we go. I don't know why it didn't retain any of the file name. But that's okay. So I'm going to say that. Yes. Now I can preview my PDF over here in Lifecycle. So these are outlined in red to mean it's, you know, not required field. So I'm going to go ahead and type that May 2025 because it's going to take me a while uh, 303 you could put some validation on these fields but I'm not going to and it's floating a little high above the line but I really don't care I don't really know the name so I'm just going to say oh check whatever reason for needing a waiver. Now if I click this, it's gonna ask me how I'm how am I set up? So I actually have Outlook installed on this computer. So I'm gonna just say desktop email application. And what that's done is fire up a message sent to Andy Hartman it fills in the subject which isn't entirely meaningful but he'll know what this is and if I open that attachment the nice thing is is it's my PDF all filled out nice and pretty so there's one so there's one final step to uh, your Adobe form and that is for people that only have the free Adobe Reader, you still want them to be able to type into your form 
and then submit that via email. So what I've done is the form I made in Lifecycle with the submit via email button I've opened back up in Adobe Acrobat Pro and now what I want to do is save it as a reader extended PDF and I want to enable additional features and what this allows people with the free Adobe Reader to save form data so that way they can type in it save it email it back to the person so if I save that I'm gonna go ahead and save over this I am now finished and I have a nice Adobe PDF form with a submit via email button it is a bit involved and even an IT guy has to Google and struggle a little bit with this so don't feel bad and hopefully this video makes it easy for you to do it so there's one so there's one final step to uh, your Adobe form and that is for people that only have the free Adobe Reader you still want them to be able to type into your form and then submit that via email so what I've done is the form I made in Lifecycle with the submit via email button I've opened back up in Adobe Acrobat Pro and now what I want to do is save it as a reader extended PDF and I want to enable additional features and what this allows people with the free Adobe Reader to save form data so that way they can type in it save it email it back to the person so if I save that I'm gonna go ahead and save over this I am now finished and I have a nice Adobe PDF form with a submit via email button it is a bit involved and even an IT guy has to Google and struggle a little bit with this so don't feel bad and hopefully this video makes it easy for you to do it